As we conclude Surah Al-Anfal, the, the remaining three verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers, and these are verses 27, 29, and 45 of Surah Al-Anfal. Surah Al-Anfal is Surah number 8 according to the sequence of Quran, according to the sequence of Revelation, Surah number 88. In ayah number 27, and this is the 47th address of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers by saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, or O believers. Allah azza wa jal says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la takhunu allaha wa ar-rasoola wa takhunu amanatikum wa antum ta'lamun. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Although this ayah was revealed connected to a very important incident in the history of Islam, but the ayah is until the day of judgment and the address stays until the day of judgment. Allah says in this ayah, O believers, do not betray Allah and His Messenger. Do not commit treason with Allah and His Messenger. In result of that, you will do treason and betrayal amongst yourselves. وَتَخُونُوا أَمَانَاتِكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And then Allah says, وَعْلَمُوا Understand and adhere. أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً Indeed, your wealth and your children, your family members, are a test for you. And indeed, with Allah is the greatest reward. During the time of the Battle of Ahzab, one of the difficulties that were faced by the believers is, was not just about the people of Mecca coming and attacking the city of Medina, for which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dig a very long and a very huge uh, trench, which is also known as the Battle of Khandaq. But there was a treason that was done by Banu Quraida. These were the people who were living in Medina, and at the time when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated from Mecca to Medina, he had made an agreement with all the three, three tribes, Banu Quraida, Banu Nadir, and Banu Qainqa that you will not assist those who are coming against us and neither we will assist those who are coming against you and there will be a peace and harmony amongst us. So, Banu Nadir has already broken their uh, covenant and their promise. Now, Banu Quraida, they also went ahead and they helped and assisted the people of Mecca in regards to this battle of, uh, during the Battle of Trench. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he returned after 27 days of muhasara of this area of the, of, during the Battle of Trench, when he returned back to Masjid al-Nabawi, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent his uh, angel Jibra'il Alayhi Salam to inform the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and go and do muhasara uh, surround the people of Banu Quraida because they had betrayed Allah and his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At that time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he appointed Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu to go and do a conversation and come to an agreement with these people. And Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu was the leader of the tribe of Aus in Medina al Munawwara, the two famous tribe of Medina, Aus and Khazraj. And at that time, Banu Quraida, they said that they would talk to Abu Lubaba al-Ansari radiallahu an instead of Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. Before they can come to an agreement with talking to Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, they want to have a conversation with Abu Lubaba. And Abu Lubaba was, radiallahu anhu, was much more closer to the people of Banu Quraida. And in fact, his entire family lived with the, uh, in the same area where Banu Quraida was living with the Jews. Of course, the entire family was Muslim. He himself also accepted Islam. But at the time when he went to talk, he was not allowed to give out some certain information which the Prophet Sallallahu stopped him from doing so. And Abu Lubaba radiallahu anhu, due to 
whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had intended for him at that time. And as uh, many of the scholars, Suyuti rahimahullah mentions that sometimes the Sahaba, they slipped from the orders of Allah to on purpose, meaning Allah made them do that on purpose so the entire ummah can get a lesson in the future that how they are supposed to deal with these situations when they were to arise in the ummah and how the Sahaba dealt with it. So Abu Lubaba radiallahu anhu, when he went in front of the people of Banu Qurayda, he gave them a hint that all of you are going to be finished. And the reason why you're going to be finished is because you did not leave anything, any excuse for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to let you go because you created more difficulty for the Muslims at the time when they were facing the people of Mecca during the Battle of Ahzab. And Abu Lubaba himself radiallahu anhu mentions that at that time when I just made a gesture towards the people of Banu Quraida and their leader that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not going to let you go and whatever the agreement, because Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu had already told the Prophet Sallallahu that Ya Rasulullah, I'm not going to compromise until illa al-qatl. I'm just going to take care of these people. Even though I know them for so many years and there are so many close friends that I know that who are within Banu Quraida, but this is above and beyond. And I cannot tolerate how they have disrespected Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Abu Lubaba, without the consent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he hinted towards this action, and upon this, this ayah was revealed, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَخُونُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ And before the ayah was revealed, Abu Lubaba understood his mistake, and he went and he tied himself onto one of the pillars of Masjid al-Nabawi. That's why the old, and I think probably now they have removed these names, but they had these pillars, they had names in Masjid al-Nabawi for a long time. Now the names have been removed. But this was in a specific name, the Ustawan Abu Lubaba, the pillar of Abu Lubaba. And this was Abu Lubaba radiallahu anhu that when he realized his mistake immediately, he went and he tied himself to the pillar of, Mid of Masjid al-Nabawi. And for seven days he tied himself, did not eat anything, did not drink anything until Allah revealed the verses of his tawbah. And he told his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself came and untied him. And he told the, uh, the believers that Abu Lubaba has been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this ayah, it gives us a very important message. And that message is, that Allah Azza wa Jal, He is saying that, O oh believers, if your relationship with Allah and your love for Allah and His Messenger is not right, then all the dealings that you do in this world are not going to be right. And then Allah specifically mentions that your wealth and your family members, your position and your family are not the people that you should be compromising the orders of Allah for. They are the test. Sometimes you have a family member who is doing something wrong, who is not doing the right thing. He is disobeying Allah and His Messenger. He's doing actions that are against Allah and His Messenger. Just because they are your family members and if you were to go and assist them and you know, coincide with them and, uh, and, and aid them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is khiyana to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these are the tests that Allah will make everyone go through. Because a person melts down due to the conditions that he is surrounded by. But when a person trusts his, he puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah azza wa jal protects him. And this is a lesson that we need to go in today. Because today, in today's day and age, this happens a lot. Sometimes we mellow down, we compromise in many of the orders of Allah Azza wa Jal because of family and we say, oh, you know, brother, I'm going through this, my family is this, so I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. No. The order of Allah and His Messenger is above my family, 
my kids, my job, and everything that I possess. And no one can be above the order of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa So when I have to go through this uh, battle where I am going to be in front, either listen to what my close people are telling me, and listen to what Allah and His Messenger is telling me, then I should go with Allah and His Messenger and not to go with those who are associated or who are close to me. Why? Because Allah says, if you do that, then eventually you will go and tomorrow the people that you are making someone happy against the orders of Allah, these are the same people who Allah will turn them against you. And it happens. Today you do something wrong just because your child wants to do it and tomorrow the same child of yours becomes rebellious and he leaves you hanging and at that time you have no choice but to cry. So fix it from the beginning so that you don't have to regret later on. This is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all the believers that all oh, believers do not do this. Otherwise, you would regret. The next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is ayah number 29. That, O believers, if you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will bring a criterion for you. A way that will take you away from the disobedience of Allah and bring you upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person adapts the life of taqwa, Allah facilitates for him such a life that he himself enjoys under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ita'ah of Allah. So we have to begin with adopting taqwa in our life, then Allah will take care of their... يَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ فُرْقَانًا وَيُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ He will forgive our sins, He will pardon our mistakes. All of those things will be done when a person lives the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to live. And this is immediately after the previous verse, giving us the understanding that Allah will take care of everything as long as you take care of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the last verse of Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in this surah, this is ayah number 45. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha laqeetum fi'atan fathbutu wa dhkurullaha kathiran la'allakum tuflihun. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ مَصْبِرُوا Allah Azza wa Jal says, O oh believers, when you, when you confront such people who are going against the orders of Allah, be steadfast. Do not lose hope, do not become weak. And Allah's help will be with you. And one of the, one of the sign of weakness is that you start to have dispute amongst yourself. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا Obey Allah and His Messenger and do not go into dispute. If you go into dispute, what will happen? فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ You will become weak, you will become coward, and وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Allah says, your greatness will be gone. Whenever the ummah went through ikhtilaf, great situations came and others took benefit of that and they made benefit through the disputes of the Muslim ummah. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He is addressing the believers that ita'at of Allah, ita'at of the Messenger of Allah, wala tanaza'u, do not go into fights. Do not dispute. Otherwise, you will lose your ground. You will lose the ground of work. Many things... Years and years of effort is destroyed by just few months of, you know, arguments or few months of disputes. And the history is already an example. We can back, look back into the history and see that the disputes in the Muslim Ummah has caused so many damages that it is unimaginable and unmentionable. We ask Allah to grant us the understanding and we ask Allah to give us the ability to practice. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullahu khair.
الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما ومن تاب وعمل صالحا فإنه يتوب إلى الله متابا والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا عليها صم وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم 